Hi there and welcome to Storytime with Uncle Bill. <clears throat> Today's 31 of a year to get fit. We're not doing anything today. And I mean nothing. I'm sore all over. Um, it's a good day to take a rest. Uh, it's December 1st. And I'm one of the lucky people, folks, that, um, you, I call it lucky, that when something hits the fan, people call me. And, um, a lot of times it's tough to deal with because um, you want to help everybody and everybody I can, I do, for everybody I can, I pray for because um, I know that's what reality is. And if I get stuck on anything, anybody else's problem other than my own, I tend to find that I don't, I don't do so well because um, it, it brings you down. That's why I always ask what's good with you because I know we all got something bad. But I would rather you come to me with the bad because maybe I'll be able to work it out with you. And most of the time, the bad ends up involving something that involves our past. Our past coming back to haunt us or coming back to bite us in the ass. And I'm all too familiar with that. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've hit that road like, hey, uh, Especially with jobs, hundreds and hundreds of interviews. And I've got management experience, I'm trustworthy, I'm clean cut. You know, I got a beard, but I'm, I shave every day. Um, everything matters to me customer service, uh, everything. Um, my attention to detail, the jobs. And it doesn't matter if. <clears throat> You see that I spent five years in federal prison because I got busted with a truck full of marijuana. It was right out the door. A lot of times. Sometimes some people don't care. You know what I mean? Um, but you have to own that. And you have to find a different avenue every time. Because I went through hundreds of people. I mean hundreds. And you know how discouraging that is? When, when they look at your, when they just look at your resume... They called you in because of your resume. And, and, and you put, are you a convicted felon? You, you checked yes. You checked it. You didn't wasn't trying to lie. You wasn't trying to hide shit. You checked yes because that was the truth. And they get you down there for an interview. And, you know, but that's the chance. And I do great in interviews, people. I'm, I'm not scared. I'll take your job if it's good enough. I, if I want it, I'll get it. I promise you. Didn't mean nothing. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we, we can't hire a convicted fellow. What do you waste my time for? You want to just, most, and you know what is funny? Probably about 15, 20 times, it was just somebody wanted to hear a story about somebody going to prison. There's, I've met people that I've been locked up with that that would have been enough to at least warrant smacking somebody's face. I mean, like that's like that's the bare minimum. And it's crazy that there's a world like that that exists. You probably live next to one. If you live next to a jail or a prison. Jungle. It's crazy. That's why I'm actually doing this. It's like, how are you doing a workout video and talking about addiction? Because you can get addicted to working out. And it's better than just about any other bad addictions. But anything you get addicted to is potentially has or has the potential to be bad. Because if you get, you know, it, and it won't take long. You just work out with me. I, I am a nobody in the field of working out. But I will get you results. If you do what I do and, and, and go through the process, I promise you, you'll have results. I I promise you. I bet every. I bet my whole damn life on it. Go through it. Come on with the whole year. If you want to see absolutely nothing and you try, come get it. Straight up. The past. You know, one of the greatest. The, there's a saying that I hear a lot. That I know is a lot. And I don't really understand why they say it. I may go look it up after this. 
The sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me. Oh, man. <laughs> Wrong. I've seen the most confident people. Pe people who aren't afraid of anything. People that have the confidence to be anything that they ever wanted to be have accomplished many, many great things. And one person came in their life and destroyed it all. The whole dream of themselves destroyed over some words. For some people, I've been that dude. If you come, and I'm going to be honest with you, I'm, I'm going to be dead honest with you. Listen to what I'm saying. If you come at me with your worst, with the intentions of hurting my feelings, my family, or my friends, I'm hoping it's God's will that I, I can do the right thing, or I'm coming for your ass. And if I can't get to you physically, I'll see what the words will do. I mean, that's just straight up. And I've, I've heard quite a few people's feelings. They will come to you and tell you, Uncle Bill, Billy Jakowski, whatever you want to call me, destroy them. If not for five seconds, and I'm not proud of it, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bragging about that. I'm not proud of it. And we're all friends. Because I'm going to come to you and say, hey, I told you not ever, don't ever do this. Like I'm looking at you. I'm looking, if you're looking at me, I'm looking at you. Don't ever cross me. I'll do anything in the world for you. I mean, anything. Just if, I, if it don't involve bad, I'll do anything for you. If you need help, I'm there. Call, try me. I give you a long ass list, a long list of people that have said, "Hey, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a chance to see what this do." And we've talked forever. I've come to you, and we talked forever. That's how most people they just need somebody to talk to. We talked forever. You came to me, picked me up. We talked forever. You needed work done. You, you you needed somebody to watch your kids. You needed somebody to watch your house. You need somebody to watch your dog. Things that are important to you. Things that matter. Things that would hurt you if you lost it. You came to me. And I bored. I, I took it all in. That's what I did. You know I care. I'm not just an average ass dude. I cared. You came to me because you knew I cared. And then you tried me. And people, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is we're all good. But I use words to hurt people. I've used these fists to hurt people and these knees and elbows, his head. And I'm not proud of it. But I know something. I know that they and me are better for it. And they'll probably tell you the same thing. You know what they tell you? They hated me for a second. Just like I hated them. The difference being is I told you. I will not hold back. I will tear into your ass. And it is because I care. Because when I don't care, I'm not there. And everybody watching me is the same way. The difference is I fight for you. And I, and, and, and I don't mean to say that like you wouldn't fight. I mean, it's, I'm, I will fight for you. I will, I will keep pushing until we get to where we're there again. Because I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to be the one. If, if, if I'm the one that breaks the wedge, come to me. We'll, we'll figure that. We'll figure it out. I know how to say I'm sorry. I'm, and, and, and for all those times that I have been me, I come back and say I'm sorry. Every time I am, I never want to be. I don't want to be a bad guy. I don't look at me. I do not. I'm. I'm. I'm here trying to help. I care, man, because addiction kills. The past haunts. And you got to learn to live with that past. Rick Warren, I, I don't know who Rick Warren is. It says he's a pastor. 
He wrote, we are a product of our past, but we don't have to be prisoners of it. And a lot of us, we're, we're still locked in our head. And there's two kind of, when I think of the past, I think there's two kind of past. You got your family past and you got your personal past. The family past, you don't have nothing to do. You know what I used to hear as a kid? You're going to grow up to be like your uncles. Your Uncle Frank and your Uncle, uh, your Uncle Frank and your Uncle Tony. And, and, you know, they had, they had prison records and, or they went to jail and stuff. They got in trouble. They drank. You know, they were alcoholics and stuff. They got me. I did bad things with them, you know, I stole with them and, and, and you know, held them cheat and all kind of other shit and, and I loved them. I didn't see them as bad guys. I saw them as my uncles. So for you to say you're going to end up like that and it be a negative thing, and I understand because that's the truth and, 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 and that's what it really everything boils down to is the truth and accepting it. Because once you start accepting the truth, you can start to forgive yourself and you and everybody else. It's a lot easier when the truth's out, man, and you're free. It's a lot easier because the past, if, if you are a prisoner of the past, you know, the, the, the now is not it. It's just bad. And how can it always be bad? It can't. And the people and the people that you think are into your past probably don't give two shit. And you and and you know and you go into a new adventure, you know once you once you find yourself alone, and you look around, you have to learn to deal with yourself, and take that time to deal with yourself. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of advice. Let me give you a little bit of advice. Learn all your weaknesses and don't let nobody beat you with them. If somebody comes to you and calls you every bad name in the book. Learn to look back at them and say just a little bit more and you might got me mad. Man, don't egg nobody on a bit. Because the odds are, man, you're... have you ever been perfect? You know what most people are afraid of? They're going to be their old selves again. And sometimes you're just looking for a reason to be that bad person, to go back to doing the bad things. Oh, man, if he does that to me one more time, or if she says this, I'm going to do in the spiral. And you know when it happens, cognitive behavior will tell you every time. This is what happened, and this is where it started going bad, and be able to blame it on yourself. Because the past is about forgiveness. You got to learn to forgive somebody. There's something that needs to be forgiven. There's something that needs to be accepted. And there's probably something that needs to be communicated. And let me give you the best advice I can when it comes to family. Oftentimes, we think we can't say it because it'll be disrespectful. It'll be rude. It'll be hurtful. It'll be anything other than the parent-child relationship. Well, at some point in time, you have to say that's enough. At some point in time, you got to say, hey, look, this is what this is what is. Because every time you say, I want to say this and you don't, you're killing yourself. And I see it over and over again. Bill, what do I need to do? All I want to do, here it comes. Listen, all I want to do is tell her. All I want to do is tell him and you're telling me, but you're not telling them. Tell them. What is the worst that's going to happen? What is the worst? Especially if there's distance. It's even greater if there's distance. Get it out. Get it, get it out. Most of you have been preparing your whole life for that moment, too. You've had that conversation over and over again, and you're dealing with the same realities for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Some of you are going through the same shit. 
long enough to retire on it. And you haven't done anything but complain. And at some point in time, man, that just gets old. Because you could do something now and you could have done something every time. But the beauty about it is right now. Right now, we could do something to correct any wrongs. Right now, we can, could do something to make things right. I mean, you should. You should want to. Right now, you could make a call that will make a difference. Good or bad. You never know. And if and if you if you try to guess what the other person is saying, or if you're not talking for fear of sounding stupid, or you're not talking for fear of of uh, of not wanting to be wrong, or or just you're not talking. You got to remember communication is a two sided street. You both need to be listening. To each other because it should be important and listening not doing anything else if it's that important to you take the time to make sure that nothing else is and you know what i tell people hey look i need to talk to you is there any way that you would that you have some free time that if there's going to be a distraction that you can cancel that out so it could just be me and you so don't be on your phone on Facebook or watching TV or looking at the kids play soccer. You can just talk to me. And if you could get to do that in person, probably be a little bit better. Find, find it in you to find it as important to do it. And you'll be surprised because it's one of those things. This is one of those things because it's communication with your people. That the hardest things for us to do actually turn out to be the easiest. We just didn't even want to try. We always got to, you always got a damn excuse. Oh man, I'm too busy or they're going to say this and or I'm going to get mad and they're going to start yelling and blah, but nobody, nobody's, you just don't even try. Give somebody a chance to fail. And if they failed a thousand times, let some times go by and try again. Things change. Things change. You'd be surprised with somebody sitting by themselves how their mind could change. Doesn't mean they change. You know, a lot of people get, I've seen people go to church and be great all Sunday and come Monday morning, forgot they went to church at all. <laughs> to forget. I, mean, I mean, that's what it is, though. You're touched by the moment. But I, you know, I've met people that watch my videos and, oh, man, you know, blah, 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 blah. Go right back to doing the same thing. He ain't mad at you. Nobody is. We just hoping. That's all you can do. You're hoping. And, and, and I'm hoping that you will take this advice and, and hoping that from it, you can tighten up a relationship or have a better understanding of yourself because it's all about yourself. Everything begins with you. And you'll be judged more by the present and less by the past if you get a chance right now to prove who you are and not and it's not everywhere or every time that you get a chance to do that because some people just say no when i got out of federal prison in 2004 a free man no paper i went down to every armed forces at the age of 28 maybe i think it was 28 years old Best shape of my life. Uh, probably smartest time of my life because um, I, I was doing all those classes and working out all the time. And it didn't even give me, I mean, I probably had the shortest interviews ever. And when, and when I, you got to understand something, when I'm walking through the door, these dudes are salivating. That's their job to pull dudes in and, and to get them into the military somehow, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm coming there freely and all, I, they just need a signature. That's all they need. And I say, they say, you got any felons? Yeah. Here's my, here's my charge, folks. Possession with the intent to distribute 98.8. 98.8. Keys of marijuana. Keys, yeah. Just short of 200 pounds. 
Oh, I'm sorry. That that charge right there. We can't we can't set you. I said dog is pot. It's, it's reefer. Yeah, no, no, you're you're a continental terrorist. Continental who? You mean the United States of America thinks I'm a terrorist because I had pot in a truck. And I can't be in the military. I can't go over and fight somebody else's war. <laughs> wow. I was stunned. I mean, the dude told me if I had a murder charge, he could get me in. M most of them. Uh, like, there's only so many charges that a healthy male can't get in the military in. And mine was possession with the intent to distribute. Pop. Marijuana. Couldn't believe it, man. I was devastated. I, like, I knew, like, this was the best avenue. It had always been one of the better avenues anyway to come out of prison and get a new life started in the right direction and shut down immediately. I should have did some research. But I had heard that a few of the dudes that had been in federal prison before were able to join the military but you got to go through, you got to get a congressman to prove you or something. You, they, they gave me these forms and stuff. And to be honest with you, that's one of those moments where I could have took the time and done the right thing and maybe got in. But I just said to hell with it. My past has come back to haunt me and I'm not going to be able to do anything about it. I just gave up. And I probably did that on a bunch of things too. You know what I mean? Um, cause the reality is sometimes you can find that one person that might be able to pull strings. Cause I mean, the president could get you off, get you out of prison. It might be and the governor could get you out of the electric chair. You know what I mean? So, I mean, and it happens. It might not happen as much as people want to, but it's a possibility where your, where your past may not be so bad. Because sometimes your past being bad might help you. But I never recommend it. I talked to a couple people. This is why I brought it up. Because the past is, can be ugly. But at some point in time, you got to let it go. If it's not in your face directly all the time. Because most of the time you are, it's you, you're the prison. Because if you really look around, there's nobody else looking at you. You're not a convict. You're just you, stuck in you. Let it go. Find a way. I wait, you know, sometimes I just wish I had a phone and yeah, you give my phone number and we can figure it out. I have a lot of people, man. And, and, and it's, it's in you to do this. In you to do this. I would love to see down in the comments. I made a phone call and it made a difference. I went to this person's house and it made a difference. Even if it's bad, you'll know. Even Listen to me. Even if it's bad, it means you took a chance. And if you think it's going to hurt you, take a chance. Get it in your head that it's going to hurt you. It might not hurt so bad because you already expect it. it's going to hurt anyway. Good or bad. It might hurt you and make you happy at the same time in a good or bad way. It's one of life's beautiful contradictions how things work like that. But knowing is a lot better than not. That uncertainty, the anxiety, it'll consume you. When you could just say, hey, I don't appreciate what you did. I hate that you did this. I wish that, and, and, and don't, I always tell people, don't come to me with a problem. Come to me with a solution. 
But if you got a problem, come to me with the problem on aiming to get a solution. Because me and you shouldn't be talking about a problem. We can't figure out what the hell is going on and how to solve it. Because what are we talking for if not? I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not it's, I'm not a one hour session. I'll be with you until the end. And sometimes that's taking years, folks. And it's a it's 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 kind of like a burden. You hear the same thing over and over again. When you haven't tried anything. You have to try something. Anything. Because anything's better than nothing. And knowing is a lot better than no even If you suspect your old lady's cheating on you and she says she's cheating on you, does it make it right? Does it make it better? What does it do? I mean, because you're so worried that she is, now the worry's gone. Okay, she is. Now what? What happens? What's the next step? Do you know how many people say don't do that shit again? And why? Some might say they was honest about it. A whole lot of people would leave. But there, there's a certain... I'm not, I'm not really sure how you say about the honest thing. That you... Or just like a little bit more forgiveness. Is the only way I could really put it. Regardless of what the situation is, and if you don't believe that, you look how many people that had their kids killed by somebody and they're writing those people in jail. Because there's nothing else they could do anymore except forgive. Horribly murdered their kids. Go visit them in prison. Something I couldn't imagine. But it I do know what forgiveness is. Because hate hates the prisoner. Hate will hold you down. Hate will consume you just like stress will. And stress will kill you. If you find yourself keep crying over and over again about the same situation, you're dying little by little. Find a way to relieve that. And it'll go away. Everything's bad now. But your whole life ain't been bad. Forgive yourself. It's all right. And above all else, know your weaknesses and don't let nobody come in there and take it. Take your peace. Take your joy. Take your happiness. And if they are, what reason are they doing it for? Because if I'm doing it, I'm doing it because I want to show you that you just can't do this to people. And I'm people. And I'm a good person. And if we're that close that I hurt you with my words, you probably hurt me first. I'll bet you 100% of the time. And I, and you knew I didn't want to do it. I mean, I... If, if it sounds bad to you people, it's just because I'm real. I'm going to be real, and I'm going to be me all the time. And I told you who I was. Please don't ever try me. I won't try you. It's just not worth it. It's not. It, it, we, we, we can't be nothing if we try each other. Now, I understand we're going to disagree. I understand that there's going to be things that you write that I don't like, and there's going to be things that I say that you don't. I understand all that. It's like a, it's opinions. And I won't judge you. You know, that's what people are out here that are, man, you just don't judge me. Yeah, because you are who you are. Don't lie to me and let me be able to figure out who you are. Because it ain't going to take you long to figure out who I am. Just keep watching and see if I'm the same dude. And, and you can, and, and if anything happens in my life, you can, you can, we, we, we talk about all of it. Because the past is the past and I'm living now. So you could come at me with everything you want. Talk all 
all you want about my past. And I just make sure, like it's a history lesson. Learn something from it. I did. I had to. That's why I'm here now. I'm trying to help somebody else. Maybe you might not need my help. Because you're fine. You're good. And that's awesome, man. Because you're here in a good place. Just like I am. And if you want to come to see if you're good enough with the words, I'll hang out with you for six months to a year and we'll see what you got. Because I understand. I mean, I think it... I think everybody deserves to be tested every now and again. It just comes when I get tested, I go off the rail, man. I mean, I'm hardcore. Hardcore. Just because I love you. My mama beat the hell out of me, folks. Savage. Especially if she says something more than three or four times. We was in trouble then. My mama's thing was, you're not dumb. I'm going to tell you one time. She loved me. Don't do this. If you did do this, I'm going to beat your ass. I do that. Mama says, didn't I tell you not to do this? That's how it starts. Man, if that answer is yes, and you better say yes, ma'am. That's what my mama said. Go to your room and pull down your pants. I've heard that line. I've had to answer. Did What did I tell you about this? Or what's going to happen? Oh, boy, you say he's going to beat me. Yeah. No mercy. No mercy. She saw it as me trying her. And if I did that to anybody else, it could be consequences to her. When I got in trouble in school, it made her look bad. So, whatever I had to deal with at school, I had to deal with when I got home. Oh boy. No mercy. Grounded. Um, had to stand, uh, kneel, stand in the corners, kneel in the corners, kneel on rice, hot sauce in the mouth, busting spoons on my hands for fighting. Uh, got beat by the bell, a paddle, extension cord, and anything that would fly. And, and listen, it was probably abuse. It was discipline. It was out of love. Even the worst ass beating I got. I mean, I almost burned the house down. You know, not intentionally. Just trying to like Fruit Loops. After I've been told multiple times not to play with lighters. I deserved it. Understood it. I, and I understand more than anything else on earth that discipline is not about hate. Though it looks like it. It's about love. I'm trying to teach you a lesson. Everything was a lesson, folks. This is the lesson. Lesson, let the past. Don't let it haunt you. Hold you prisoner. About letting go and finding forgiveness and peace. You have to find peace within yourself. To even live or want to be with anybody else. You got to find ways that if you're lying to stop lying, you have to lie to yourself and everybody else. And the worst one of those is when you got other people lying for you. Now you just became a whole different category. Because the past will haunt you. Words, sticks and stones may break my bones. Words may never hurt me. Okay. Tell you how many times I cried. Wondering how the hell am I gonna get past this? Or am I even any better than my uncles? Which was never a comparison. I loved them to death, and they were they were my they were they were it. They was the bee's knees to me. No greater joy than being free. I know it from a mental aspect. And I know it. It's 8406 That's my federal inmate number. 
five years, five United States prisons, 30 something county jails. Some of the nastiest. Good, some good people. Some great people. They just did bad things. Some people did unspeakable things. Some people I never saw again. That's a different kind of prisoner. And I'm still... I still carry some of that. And every day, I try to find release of it. But one disrespectful notion, word, and just all. And I hate it. I hate it. And, and man, it's, it's such a struggle because you don't lose everything you got and when all when you don't have nothing you fight for it you know that Bon Jovi song you live for the fight when that's all that you got living on a prayer woo but we living on life right now folks man Really hope you can find it, man. If it's if 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 I'm if I'm looking and talking to you, try it, man. Just try it. I hope everybody's having a good day and staying safe. If you can't hit that like button, share it, subscribe if you haven't. Wish y'all well, folks.